everybody and welcome back to Thirsty Thursday. It has been so long since I've been here at Tony's studio. So I just want to say thank you first of all to, for her, to Tony for letting me back here to make a mess of her craft room as always. So it's been since March since the last show I did and I hope you've been catching up with all my YouTube like recorded videos that I've been doing in the meantime. But it really, really, I'm really excited to be back here and back live for you today. So I've got a couple of demonstrations. I'm going to do a Christmas card using some of our um, 2019 Christmas release stamps. And I'm going to do another uh, card then with, that is suitable for all occasions, really. So we'll get on with that in a moment. There's, there is just a couple of things I wanted to check in with you about. So lots of you have been asking, and it's really, really great to hear that you're excited about what's coming new from Thirsty Brush. So we've got tons coming over the next couple of months, particularly with our birthday as well, coming up our second birthday for Thirsty Brush in August. So do look out. Everything, once I get dates, will be on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all that kind of stuff. But as well, if you want to, if you're not already, go onto the Thirsty Brush website, main page, and go to the bottom. You can put in your email address for a newsletter, and then you get a daily email from me with any offers, the YouTube videos, and it will also keep you up to date with any new releases or other kind of events that are going on. So should we get on with a bit of crafting? So let's do the Christmas one first. So some of you may have this stamp and die set already. Um, but because we're not launching our um, Christmas 2020 launch until later on this year, probably around September time, uh, but I will confirm that for you. So if you did want to get some Thirsty Brush Christmas stuff in the meantime, this is still available, but I know a lot of you got it, bought it last year. So if I just show you that, it's got a lovely wreath. Sorry about the glare. Let me take that out of there for you. So it's got this beautiful wreath stamp. So it's a kind of like really quick card and that's something that I want to show you today how quickly and easily you can do a Christmas card because it's the time of year where we have loads to do isn't it and it does come with some dies that we'll be using as well so let's first of all get that sorted and stamped on there So you've got a fun packed afternoon, haven't you? I know everybody's chatting away. You've got an afternoon of me, then Carly, isn't it? At, uh, with our Marla at quarter past two. And then Tony, um, is it three or after Carly's finished anyway? One of the, one of the two. So I, I have got your names in front of me, but if I don't catch everybody, um, I will pop in and say hello to everybody after. But just the ones that I can see in front of me now, we've got Joe, Paul, Tracy, Ruth, Amanda, May, Karen. Oh, thank you so much for joining in. But like I say, I will catch up. And I've got my tea as well, if you've got yours. So you'll have to remind me I don't like cold tea. So this is the lovely wreath stamp and it's like poinsettias and it's got some like berries on there as well and a hand drawn little frame there. So if we pop that onto some white cardstock, it doesn't matter really whereabouts because I'm going to die cut it out anyway. Um, actually, let's not do it in black. Let's do it in the uh, gold digger powder because everybody loves that, don't they? So I'm going to emboss. So use an anti-static bag first, as always. If you haven't done much heat embossing before, if you used to Tony's channel, you'll have probably seen it loads. She uses my powders as well. But check out my YouTube as well, because there's tons of videos on there about embossing. And I'm going to use the Luminosity ink pad or whichever embossing ink pad. You just need a clear sticky one, whichever one you've got at home. So just to mention here with the stamp, it's a solid stamp there to stop it going out of shape. If you get a bubble there, just lift it up and pop it back down again and that will stop your ink transferring onto your artwork. So let's pop that over. Give it a good press. And I always go in at least twice with an embossing ink because, especially on your white card, it can be difficult 
to see where you've inked, so just in case we missed a bit. Pop that in. Has anybody been up to anything interesting today? What is it, Wednesday? We'll all be going out for your, uh, your Wednesday meal soon, won't we, when we get our discounts? Who just thought the government would uh, bring in like a group on discount for your meals? <laughs> so I've got a piece of excess paper here to catch my powder and the gold digger. And because it's one big piece, you haven't got to worry about all the composition of this design or anything like that. It's, that bit's all done for you. Just get a brush there. If you do get any extra that you've missed with your anti-static, just brush it off with a dry brush. <sighs> Give it a bit of a blow as well just to get any excess and then we can pop that back in. I started using one of those Moxie trays as well, the, you know, the glitter trays for catching my embossing powder. That seems to be a bit better. I'm less messy with that, but I haven't got it with me today. Right then, so let's heat set that. Just going to pop my stamp back on its sheet. And then get the heat tool nice and hot. And it'll only take seconds then, but it's really nice kind of fine detail. You've got two big poinsettias, loads of leaves and berries there. So this looks great in your traditional colours or we're going to do some fun colours today, like some purples and teals and things like that for a bit of a change. You can see that starting to shine. I'll hold it up in a second for you. So you can see the shine on that then. And there we go, under the lights. So really, really beautiful in the gold. And to be honest, if you'd put that with the sentiment just as it is, that makes a beautiful card. But as I say, let's add some colour. So I've got some of Tony's gossip pens here, but the water-based ones, those are the ones in the blue barrel. But we're going to use them kind of like a paint. So I'm going to scribble a couple of colours just on the plastic part of my Eureka lid here and just add a bit of water. So I've got some like teals and purples, a bit of an orange. So we're going funky Christmas rather than traditional Christmas today. Just grab my water. Salma says, sorry I'm late, don't worry. <laughs> you can always catch up on anything you missed. I don't think there was much anyway, just me rambling on as usual. Oh, I think I've got a bit of, you know, the confetti metallic paints. I think I've still got a bit, must be on my brush. Let me just pop that on a bit of spare card because as I've added my water to these pens, it's made it a bit shimmery. Can you see that? So that's like one of those happy accidents, actually. So really what we've done here is we've made Tony's gossip pens shimmery as well, like the confetti paint. <laughs> so I'm just very, very loosely, so I've added a little bit of water on my brush into that smushed up pen there. And I'm very, very loosely. I'm not even purposely keeping in the lines because I just want to keep it simple and have that really nice pop of colour. So for today, as you'll notice, I'm not doing anything mega complicated. Um, I haven't been in the studio for a while, so a bit of relearning for me as well of getting back into the process of doing it as a live show. Um, but as well, you don't really need to do a hell of a lot with a stamp like this anyway. So 
I've just gone round. You'll notice I move my artwork as I'm using, as I'm colouring rather than leaning over, and that just stops you smudging. So, yes, Joe, I know you're desperate for confetti paints, <laughs> yeah, and I get messages nearly every day about the confetti paints and um, the big embossing powders. Excuse me, Slurpee. So, yes, they're both on the way. I'm waiting for stock. Um, but, yeah, as you, as you probably know, at the moment, things are a little bit slower than they usually are in terms of getting stuff in. But I promise you, they are on order and you will be the first to know, all of you, once they're, they're coming. I'm really, really pleased that you all love them so much. They're so fun to use. Did anyone see on the Facebook group, actually, on the brochettes, Elaine from Tony's design team used her paints on a, like a mixed media. She kind of pimped up a household painting brush. It was really, really cool. She's put all this paste on it and stenciled on it and used the, the confetti paints and all these other bits and embellished it. It looks absolutely amazing. I don't normally do a huge amount of mixed media, but that's... I must admit, she's really inspired me to give something like that a go. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Trying things we don't normally. Okay, so we've got a kind of pinky purple and then a purple purple of the poinsettias, which is a bit different. I'm not going to do the middle yet because I just want that to dry a bit. If I do the middles now, it might bleed in. And if you want that kind of look, like your blended watercolour, that's fine. Uh, but if you don't, just leave it to dry. So I'm going to go in with the more teals and the greens now for the leaves. That's a nice light tealy blue, this one. Let's try a bit of green for these outer leaves. So I'm not doing any blending or shading here. It's literally just a bit of the pen on the mat and some water and a very, very loose. So not like some of the more complicated watercolour techniques we've been doing on the YouTube. Um, this is like anybody can do this, even if you've never ever watercoloured before. So I just want to go back in with that kind of orangey. It's quite pale, but I'm going to use that for the middles of the flowers and the... Um, I was going to call them the baubles. No. Berries. <laughs> <laughs> Irene said, I thought you might be in the background somewhere, so no. No, she's around, she's getting ready for uh, her show as well in a bit. <laughs> so I've put them in the berries, but we've had a nice socially distanced catch-up this morning. So we've, uh, we've had a nice, lots of cups of tea and lots of chatting. So I'm just going to wipe out the rest of that. Now, if I was at home, I would not get rid of that extra ink there. I would either smush another piece of card in for a background or stamp out another one and use it up. It's only because I need to clear down ready for the next bit that I'm getting rid of that. So I'm just going to dry that off and then we can die cut this out. Yes, Joe and Amanda, it was lovely to catch up, but yeah, very weird that we can't hug. We normally do hugs and it's like air kisses at six foot, isn't it, these days? Very, very strange. So that's just dried that off. Can you see that tiny bit of shimmer that's come just from having a tiny bit of old of the metallic paints on my brush there? So that's really cool, I like that. So let's get out the dye. So... Scott, you're in standard outline dies, so no fussy cutting. And I really think that's important when you're doing a ton of Christmas cards. So 
if you're anything like me and you've got about 100 to make, the last thing you want to be doing is spending time fussy cutting your designs, isn't it? So just hold that in place with a bit of tape. I'm going to run that through. It's so nice to see so many of you. Oh, hi Phil, hi Kay. Loads of friendly names that I recognise. Either I've met you in person or on the group or some new people as well, so welcome. So we'll be out, like I say, we'll be back on Create and Craft soon and it'll be about once a month, roughly, hopefully building up to a bit more than that as well. out nice and easy now just get that low tack tape off right so you can either use that then as a topper straight on your cards but again I'm conscious that when people make Christmas cards a lot of the time we post them and the thicker your card the more expensive it is it might not fit as a standard letter then it might be uh, that it has to go as a large letter which is more expensive or even I don't think anyone would make a car big enough for a parcel, would they, unless it was in a box. Um, but you certainly, you know, dimensions matter and weight matters. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use the die, but still to create a one layer looking card. that doesn't add any weight or any extra depth at all on there. So think about where, this is my card blank and I've got this black piece here. And I'm thinking about where I want this to be positioned on my card when I put it together. So I kind of want it, I mean you can have this whichever way up you like, but that was the way when I, when I drew the design, that was the way I did it. So I'm going to position the die straight on there and I'm using, you see I'm using the grid to straighten that up just to make sure I take that piece out exactly where I want it. And if you're doing this at home, you could re even make kind of two cards at once here, because we're going to use the negative of this die cut. So you could keep this inner piece um, and say emboss again with a, a gold again or a silver or a white even. It would be lovely if you could both do ch Christmas tutorials together. Yes, and you're right, so <laughs> Dave. Would we end up making anything or would we just end up giggling and, and chatting? But yeah, it is something that we talk about lots doing in this studio. So um, obviously we meet our commitments of our own things, but yeah, we talk about doing lots of things together. So I'm sure it won't be too long till you see us do a... Uh, craft along or a double show or something like that we always have ideas of maybe we give each other each other's designs and see what we come up with <laughs> and yes a lovely crafty family isn't it May? right so there we go so like I say normally that would be your your outline wouldn't it for that so I keep that for another card So this is my card blank, so we're going to pop this on. I've got a little bit of a mark there from my tape, but we won't worry about that for now. I'll just remember not to use that tape again. <laughs> so you could tape this on with double-sided tape, or I'm going to use my wet glue if it hasn't run out. So you can still get that kind of matte and layered look then without adding any extra bulk or weight. And it's, you know, it's not any slower to do or anything like that. So that's that on. And then we're gonna, literally going to, as if it's like paper piecing, that's going to fit directly in there.
So yeah, this looks beautiful in your traditional red and golds or your gold and silver and things like that. But I just thought we'd play around and do something a bit different with Chinese pens today. So that's in and that shows you that's completely flat now. There's no extra bulk to that. I haven't put foam pads behind the matte layer. I haven't put foam pads behind the main image. It's all completely flat. So the last thing to do is just let's have a look at the sentiments that are in this set and see what we can pop on. I was going to die cut one, but I think I might just stamp one in there, which probably should have done before I glued it in, but uh, we can do it this way. So we've got in the set, we've got you bring sparkle to my world, which is what this, the stamp set's called, Star sparkle to my world, very Merry Christmas and Joyeux Noël. My terrible French accent. Let's get me Eureka back up. And just to finish this one off, for simplest term, I'm just going to stamp in black. But again, if you did this before, you could do your gold again or a coloured ink to match up with your card. Let's make sure that's straight. Hi, anyone that's just joining. Let's clean that off. So you could finish this off then with some gems or I'll tell you what would look really nice if you did a maybe some glossy accents on some of the berries or something like that. But the, really the main thing I wanted to show you was that even with your coordinating dies you can still make a flat card that's not going to cost you anything extra than when you post it because all those pennies count, don't they? Should we go move on to the next one? So like I said, do keep your eye out though for 2020 release of uh, Thirsty Fresh Christmas stuff because there's some really cool stuff that's coming. A uh, little bit different to last year's, but there's lots of it as well that we'll coordinate. So if you have got some of that already, it's only going to complement it even more. Let me clear down this and another sip of tea and then we'll get on to our second card. Something completely different now. Hope you all enjoyed that first one anyway. Lots of you watching, it's so nice. So nice to be back. So if you are new and have not seen me on Tony's channel before, I used to do uh, this show at three o'clock every Thursday. Now Tony does her craft academy on um, three o'clock every day. Uh, so we've moved Thirsty Thursday to 1 p.m. So going forward, it will always be uh, 1 p.m. unless there's a uh, slight change because of TV commitments or anything else that Tony's got to do in here. Uh, so hopefully we don't go into any kind of second peak or anything like that and uh, we can keep up that up every week, like I say, unless I'm in Peterborough doing TV myself. So let's have a look at, if we just have a look overhead at these two designs. So some of you may have this, it's um, uh, probably about 12 months old. Uh, this little bag can't get any better. Which one? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something to update you on, very exciting in a moment. But I'll just finish what I was going to say. So, um, this particular stamp here, uh, the wood detail, and then you could either buy the die or the stamp itself. So I'm going to show you a card that it will work either or. So a lot of people didn't buy both. If you have got both, you can do either or technique. So, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to do it with this with the die, and it's like an embossing die. But then you will be able to do the same kind of technique. I'll just explain the slight difference with that. 
So there was something exciting that I wanted to uh, just add in for you. So I was waiting to see whether it would happen during the, the live hour here. Um, but the stamp that I've just demonstrated, the Sparkle to My World, um, the wreath one with the Christmas that we've literally just done, it's on the website and I wanted to make sure the offer would be on before I said it. Uh, but it's live now. If you put the stamp in your basket today, you get the die for free. So, little bonus for you. <laughs> so, let's get back to the other one. So, I need a piece of white card. And, as I say, I'm going to do the die first. And I'm going to use, it comes in two parts. So, You've got the embossing part and the die cut. If you use both together, which I'm not going to do today, but let me show you, this is what it does. So you, it cuts out your wood grain, and this is all hand-drawn wood grain. I don't know whether you can pick up... Oh, that's a bit better under the light, isn't it? Can you see all that texture? So that's been run through the die-cutting machine to cut and with that emboss bit. So you can ink those up, colour it up, however you like. And I wanted to show you, because that's the obvious way to use it, another way to use it. So if you just take the embossing piece, and we're going to place it face down, and I'm going to go similar to the other card in terms of layout, so I'm going to go about two-thirds of the way up. Uh, is that on the Stamps By Me site? So yes, it's been uploaded to thirstybrush.co.uk. Um, let me just check with Tony actually whether she's added it onto hers as well or whether it's just the, um, just the Thirsty Brush website. Are you able to check that just to clarify for people? Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, if you type in Facebook Live, FBL, into uh, the search, it's on both websites for you. So, that's our embossing part wood die, and that's going to be run through. Now, at home, I use, it's going to be different for all of your die cutting machines, depending on which one you've got. Um, so, when I use my snap, I use my shim like this, the magnetic shim, um, and that's normally enough to get a good emboss. But if you've got an embossing um, mat as well that comes with your die cutting machine, just have a play around and just see what gives you the best, uh, deepest emboss. Because you want plenty of texture for when I show you how we're going to colour it up. So just running that through. <laughs> so these pots on now, answering your question. Yeah, it's in FBL. You're all going to run off and get that now, aren't you? And <laughs> you can always catch up on this after if you're too busy checking out. <laughs> Right then, so what that's done is it's embossed now, that wood detail, because we haven't used the outline, it's just embossed it into a panel of card that we're going to use directly on to stick on our card blank. So I think I've, there must have been something on the plate there, so I'm not actually going to use that one. I'll use that to trim that down another time, but I've got one here. I hasn't got a mark on, but can you see where it's embossed it in there? All that lovely detail. So, what I could do is, I've got some distress inks here, you could use, uh, sorry, distress oxides, you could use distress inks, anything that blends, and any brushes that blend, but obviously I'm in Tony's studio, so I'm going to use one of hers. And I think some of the colours that I'm going to use here are perfect for woods, but they tend to get a bit neglected in our stock. So browns and stuff, they're just not as exciting when we buy them, are they, as those beautiful pinks or greens or anything like that. But they're still really, really useful. And this is a card that could easily be a masculine card as well, or particularly those um, wood grain, all the stamps and the dies from the wood grain section. 
So I had a practice with this before, I've taken another piece of card and I've used just the outline. So we've used both pieces but in different ways and I've made myself a kind of stencil. So what I'm going to do is use, just want to hold this in place so it doesn't budge. So just use a bit of low tap tape. Nearly finished my tea before it's gone cold. <laughs> Anne said 331 watching. Wow, thank you so much. I'm so pleased to be back. And I hope you enjoy it and tune in with me every week. But if you miss one, they're always there anyway. They always get uploaded onto Tony's Facebook. But I have put on mine, uh, not Facebook, sorry, YouTube. Um, but I have put on my YouTube, Claire Manning Craft is my channel. I've put a link to all the previous shows that I've done in Tony's studio here. So if you just subscribe to mine, I'm sure you'll want to subscribe to Tony's as well. Um, but if you look in mine, you'll see a playlist that's all my older studio makes from here when I was uh, here before lockdown. Um, but I will link in as well the new ones. So they will be on Tony's. YouTube stamps by me, but I'll just link so you can go click through if you want. So, can you see I've just positioned that so it fits perfectly with the tiny little border all around that embossed detail. And I'm going to pick a couple of these browns and I'm going to kind of do, should we do like an ombre? Let's do a light one. So I'm using antique linen, use whatever you've got, frayed burlap and gathered twigs and let's go light to dark let's make sure there's nothing already on my brush even look on the reverse of that one that I've made the mistake it comes up all that lovely detail so I'm going to do light to dark so it doesn't infiltrate too much and this is going to make all that embossed detail pop out I mean, it looks nice white on white, but there's just nothing better than when you have something embossed. Oops. And then uh, get some ink on there to bring it to life. So there we've got the bottom third. And I don't want to do it too perfectly, actually. You could spend a lot of time blending, and sometimes I do when I want something... If you saw that card I did the other day with the sky for the Christmas card, I spent a bit more time really making sure that blend was absolutely perfect. But when it's something like this, where it's supposed to be a bit rustic and a kind of perfectly imperfect, well, that's my excuse anyway. I've just gone back in with the light. If you get a line, just go back in with the lighter one and blend it. And this, that's the same with your distress inks. And then we'll go in from the top with the darkest of the three. This one's more of an earthy brown, isn't it? Hi, Chris. Bit late, don't worry. <laughs> Not to worry at all. Glad you could join us. And then, again, because I ended up with a bit of a line there, so the lighter one in this situation is the middle one, so I've just gone back in to blend that. Let's get a really dark bit there. So, what we've made here, essentially, is an embossed stencil out of a die. So when we peel that off, again, that's a flat piece that's going to go on our card blank with all that lovely inked detail and all the embossed detail. And people are going to wonder how on earth you've managed that without sticking on a die onto it. So to go on top of this, I thought I'd get out some stamps I haven't used for a while. So does anybody have or remember the herbs stamps? So we had uh, about four sets and they had like two different herbs in and it, all the sentiments were like lovely foodie themed and garden themed and they're great for like guys and um, people who are really foodies. 
So I'm going to use, I thought they went really nice with the wood. So let's get a bit of card. And I'm not going to do much colouring on these. I'm just going to very quickly stamp and just do a tiny bit of maybe alcohol marker colouring. I've got a few greens and stuff here. So I'll use the thyme. But they kind of look like cute leaves and sprigs as well. So this one, yeah, that's got the thyme and the mint in. And then I'm going to use one from another set as well. And this is the dill, but I thought it looks almost a bit like a, uh, what's the word, like a dandelion type effect. So let's pop those Let's pop the stamps aside and we can use the dies in a moment. So let's get some ink on there and because I'm using, you'll hear me talk about different inks all the time. So we used embossing ink on the first demonstration because we were using embossing powder. When I use watercolour paints, you'll see me, paints or pens, you'll see me use Versafine a lot. And then I use Memento is my one of choice for using alcohol pens. So I think it might be Adele or a couple of the other girls in the Eurekas and the Brochette groups on Facebook shared a while ago uh, a list of which inks work with which. And a lot of it's down to personal preference as well because some inks can be they're called like hybrid inks where they can be used with both. So do play around as well. But as a rule, it's about the ingredients being the opposite to what you what you're using in your medium, whether it's alcohol or water-based, but I think that gets too complicated. And if you just look at a chart of what I can use with what, then it's just much easier, isn't it? So just clean that off. So I've stamped in a grey, it's like London fog, but it's almost like a greeny grey. So because I'm going to colour in some greens, this is a proper thirsty brush card with all the greens and the browns and that kind of natural feel. Let's just add a tiny bit of colour. Nearly saw all my roots there, didn't you? But don't look. <laughs> Can you see how my pink's faded? I dyed my hair pink, if anyone didn't catch it on Facebook, and it's faded in like a week. So I'm not blending or anything again here. There's tons of blending tutorials on my YouTube, I'm just very, very quickly with the brush nib, just adding tiny strokes of colour, not in the lines, purposely not in the lines. And you're almost losing some of that outline in the grey. And I'm going to mix up two greens for the time, I think. Let's see what that one yeah, that one will go nice. It's not much different, but it should be enough to just give it a bit of depth. <laughs> Someone said you haven't seen nothing yet with roots. Uh, see, I dye mine at home, Amanda, so mine hasn't been as bad, but I know a lot of people have been waiting for the hairdressers, haven't they? <laughs> And then I'm going to use a lighter one on this dill here. Yeah, that's nice, like a yellowy green. And very, very loose just over the top. There's nothing to colour in as such with this image. It's nice enough just as it is. You can use it like a silhouette on black. Uh, with black ink over a coloured background um, but when I die cut it out like this I like to just add some really loose colour. If you've got a gardener in your life these are perfect. Okay, I told you that was quick colouring didn't I? It's really nothing, nothing complicated at all but we are going to pop in and use the dies just so we can die cut them out and then layer them over the top of 
our wood background. Who said, oh, fortunately, daughter is a hairdresser. Hi, Maxine. Spend all my money on crafts. <laughs> yeah. I think I need to do, I might be getting to do my mum's hair. She hasn't been able to get in with her hairdresser, so I think I'm going to become my mum's hairdresser from now on. Hate the hairdresser's not been since October, hey, so you're like me. I do it all my colour at home, and sometimes I even cut it at home. And you, Tracy, <laughs> which is why it looks like this. I think I cut it myself in February and I haven't, haven't touched it since. Hi, Daisy, just joined. So, there's one more bit that we need to make, isn't there, for this car before we can construct, and that's the sentiment. So, just pop these out. And then we'll do a very, very quick sentiment. So, that's our lovely time. Let's just hold those for you. So, they're really nice size as well. You do get a smaller version of them in the stamp sets, but you know, they're not, just because they're herbs and things like that rather than your florals doesn't mean that they're small little stamps and dies. You can still make a really good card out of them or um, I don't know if any of you remember, remember when they were on Crate and Craft, I made a huge big frame for my kitchen and I stamped them all and put all the names and everything of all the different herbs and it was beautiful, all just went in my kitchen but now I've had to take it down, it's in my shop. <laughs> and I have to take it around the country when I do, uh, people always ask to see it. So we're gonna kind of layer these, I think, around on the wood somewhere like this. So I want to matte and layer on some black, so I just need to trim that down, and then we'll do our sentiment. So I probably should have trimmed this down a little bit beforehand, but not to worry. Need to see how much to take off. And if I'm trimming down something like this afterwards, I tend to make sure that I'm doing it from both ends if I want the positioning to be the same. Like this bit now, I'm not going to take it all off one side, otherwise that's going to throw that off centre. So I know that I need to take a little bit. It's probably the long-winded way to do it really, as I say, probably should have done it. I tend to get my panels done beforehand, but it just goes to show you it's not the end of the world. If you, you haven't done it, you can still get round it. Well, that was a pretty good guess, wasn't it? That'll do nicely. <laughs> not perfect, but it'll do. So, let's get this back bit constructed and then we can do that last sentiment. Where have I put my glue? There it is. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Some people were asking about uh, checkout on there. Yep, so you don't need to add it in. You just add the stamp and we'll send it automatically for you. But yeah, I must admit, it's, uh, it's one that I used a lot last Christmas as well because you get three nice sentiments. You can colour it how you want, that Christmas one. So you can make different looking cards, but get all your stash done all with one stamp, really, if you want to. Okay. Let's pop these on. Yeah, a bit wonky on the end, look there. It's not too bad for last-minute trimming. 
Only a crafter would know, wouldn't they? <laughs> Davy said, love the show, Claire. Have a lot of your sums. Oh, thank you. So, yes, yeah, Sparkle to My World is what it's called. Have we got some people saying some funny things? Doing a jo good job of getting kicking them out by the looks of it. <laughs> So uh, that's the two. I'll tell you what you could do with these would be nice if it because you could do flowers or something with these as well. If you could add a little bit of twine in a bow or um, if you've got those dies of Tony's that look like the little bows, that would look really nice. So let's just add a sentiment on there. And this is one of my favourite sentiments that we did from the special words dies. And I use it over and over again. It just seems so poignant at the moment because some people are really struggling out there, not just with COVID, but just, you know, life goes on and difficult things happen as well as, don't they? So it's like something extra to deal with. So the strength die is just amazing and I just use it again and again and again. And I do think about that as well. I think about when we're picking things like fonts, words, try and think about what would I like to use and try and hopefully guess what you guys want to use but also you know sometimes you suggest things to me and you say I'd love that and I think if other people would like it you know we can we're small enough that we can do that kind of stuff so Quite a delicate one. Sometimes what I do, in fact, yeah, stuff it. Let's do it here, just in case you haven't seen. I do this all the time, so you, if you're regular on watching mine, you'll probably have seen this before. But I tend to cut out these word dies, not all the time, but a lot of the time, in two or three, and then build them together. And then I just find they're easy enough to glue on there, but that it just gives it literally a bit of extra strength and almost becomes like a little chipboard embellishment then when you put them together. So I'll just show you the process by gluing two together. But three even four looks amazing. Adding glossy accents then on the top looks amazing. Or um, another a technique that I'll very quickly talk you through as well. Yeah, sorry if you've seen it before, but I, I just I know there's a lot of new people watching today, so I just want to make sure that I get in as much as I can. So you've probably seen people before put use delicate dyes and they might put glue on their hand or their um, mat like that before they're put on. Do whatever suits you. What I really like is to use a very fine nozzle, and this one's been chipped off. Excuse me a second, I'm going to get another one just from underneath here, that I know has got the finest nozzle. And you see, something like a really, really fine nozzle, and then I find just to go straight in on top of one of them with the word facing upwards, and just do a couple of little dots along the word. Can you see that? But you do whatever you prefer. There's no right or wrong for it, it's just what makes it easy. And I don't have particularly good dexterity, so I have like a joint thing. So I prefer it like this, but you might find holding them in a different way works for you. And then when you layer over and pick up, because that's wet glue, you're going to have a second or two before it dries. And then I work from left to right and I just line it up. And you get a bit of wiggle time because it's wet glue. So anything that doesn't stick immediately. Oops, went over there.
but they're really, really easily. Look, that took a couple of seconds to add those two together and they fit on top of each other absolutely perfectly. But you can see how if you put three, four together, I've done cards where I've put rainbow colours together. You could slightly offset them, but you do get a matte layer as well with those and a lot of the sentiment dies. But this will work with any of your sentiment dies that you've got. Like Tony always says, you don't, these shows are about techniques. You don't have to have the exact ones. It's great when we do like a nice offer for you today. That's fab to be able to do that, bring that to you on my first time back. But I'm sure you can try out some of these things, some of these ideas at home with what you've already got. So, let me stick that just across there. And again, I would probably bling up. I haven't bought any sequins or anything with me today, or gems or anything like that. But uh, I would probably add a, a little bit. But for a guy's card as well, that would be absolutely perfect without, because they don't always want the sparkle. But you've got that embossed, layered, made ourselves an embossing stencil. The herbs with some really quick colouring and the beautiful sentiment there. So I really hope you've enjoyed that today. Let's have a look at both of them together. So again, I've kept it simple just for newer people joining in as well and for me just getting back in the swing of doing it in front of the camera live. So do stick with me and I hope you can join me next week because you know we'll build up the techniques um, and I'm open to ideas. If you want to see a particular stamp set or techniques, do give me a shout on any of the social medias. I'm quite happy. Uh, to squeeze it in and add it to my list. Uh, but it was so lovely. I'm just looking at some of your con uh, comments now. Uh, so, ah, oh, lovely cards. It's been so nice to see you all back. And um, yes, so Thursdays, 1 p.m. What time is it now? Five to two. So you've got time for uh, put the kettle on and another brew before Carly comes on at quarter past two. And then you've got Tony back here. So I'll see you all next week, guys. Do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.